Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we find ourselves with a challenge. The YouTube channel Testify just uploaded a video called The Question No Muslim Can Answer. The video is only four minutes long. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm here to take that challenge. Guys, before we jump into the video, do me the favor. If you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Islam, we're told, is much older than Muhammad. Quran 1636 says, We surely send a messenger to every community saying, Worship Allah and shun false gods. Quran 4078 says, we already sent messengers before you, referring to Muhammad. We have told you the stories of some of them, while others we have not. It was not for any messenger to bring a sign without Allah's permission. Yes, this is true. As Muslims, we do believe that Islam is older than the Prophet Muhammad. May peace be upon him. Matter of fact, we believe that Islam started with Adam. Ultimately, God creates the first human, and naturally, that first human is in the correct relationship to God. The correct relationship would be submission to God. Adam is in submission to God until he does not submit anymore, and the Christians would say he fell from grace, he got kicked out of Eden. That leads us to the correct understanding of what religion means in the first place. It means there are only two modes of operandi, if you will, submission or rebellion. Satan was the original rebel, if you will. He rebelled against God's will. But looking at the history of the prophets that you find in the Old Testament as well, you can only come to the same conclusion, of course. Because Abraham surely was not a Christian in the way Christians interpret Christianity nowadays. Because Abraham surely did not pray to Jesus, he didn't do the cross, he didn't have any liturgy in Greek or Roman, etc., you name it. So therefore the question becomes, of course, what was Abraham? Should we look into Jewish tradition? Jews will say as well that Abraham himself was not a Jew. He wasn't following classical Judaism either. Certainly not Second Temple Judaism or Talmudic Judaism or what have you. And therefore, we all have to agree that Abraham was a pure monotheist, a submitter to God. And this is not only an Islamic position, quite the opposite. If you look into Christian scholars, Jewish scholars, they will say exactly the same thing. They will claim that Abraham was a monotheist, and hence we are the Abrahamic faiths, right? Judaism, Christianity, and lastly, Islam. But the true question is, of course, who is really following Abraham's religion, the pure worship of one God alone, without attaching any partners to him? This would be the Muslims, of course. And hence, we claim that Abraham was a Muslim in the purest sense, and the same applies to Noah, for example, as well. Because yet again, look into Jewish and Christian scholars and what they have to say about Noah. Nobody will claim that Noah was a Jew nor a Christian. Matter of fact, some Jewish rabbis propose that the Gentiles should become Noahites, ultimately followers of the one God, and they have their law set, so they don't have to follow Mosaic law. But ultimately, it really doesn't matter which position you take. If you simply look objectively at those prophets, you will see people that submitted their will to God, Hence, they were Muslims. Hence, they followed Islam. As we look around the world and through history, we should expect to find groups of people who Muslims can identify as true followers of Allah. They wouldn't necessarily be called Muslims, and they might not believe everything that Muhammad taught, but they should be identifiable as true followers of Allah. So, let's set our Muslim friends a challenge. Let's do we'll the challenge. Specify a What's funny is always when somebody is calling you a friend, he most certainly is not. A time period and a region, and ask them to identify the true followers of Allah. As long as there is enough historical information available, this shouldn't be very difficult. The challenge, the period of history, 40 AD to 600 AD. The region, literally anywhere on planet Earth. And go! Given those limits, identify a true follower of God. We've provided more than five centuries in the entire Earth so, Muslims, this should be super easy for you. Yeah, this is so absolutely hilarious, of course, because he sets the time period from 40 AD, 40 after death, to 600 AD. So, roughly when Islam originates again. And meanwhile, the claim of Islam is that the last prophet before the prophet Muhammad was Jesus, right? Somewhere around here. 
And this only confirms Islam, of course. We do believe that the true followers of Jesus were Muslims, were true submitters to the will of God. We do believe that Jesus himself was a Muslim because we do believe that Jesus did not preach the Trinity. Matter of fact, even as a Christian, you of course cannot find any evidence that Jesus Christ himself preached the Trinity. Quite the opposite, if you look into your church, you will find certain councils, such as the Council of Nicaea, where later creeds then were developed. And therefore, we say yet again that the original teaching of Jesus was purely monotheistic. In Islam, we call it the Injil, and his followers were the true Muslims. And then over time, their teachings got corrupted. So somewhere around here, 400 AD, I believe it was 325 AD to be precise, this is where you had the Council of Nicaea, and this is where they manufactured the creed of the Trinity, etc., etc., you name it. So what is this bunk? You're just confirming Islam. Around here, the birth of Jesus Christ, we call him Isa, which was the last prophet before Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon them both, came to finalize the message and clarify that the people went astray again in this period. So why would we have to find anybody here now? It's super easy for you. But here's the problem. You're not going to find a single soul. Not one. Zilch. The period of 40 AD and 600 AD is between the lives of Jesus and Muhammad. Yes. Here exactly. are a few things that Islam teaches. Number one, true followers of Allah believe the one simple message. Allah is one. Worship him alone. Keep his laws. Number two, yes. Jesus was a true prophet of God. A man, not the son of God, not divine who taught the one simple message. Exactly, three, but he's creating another straw man yet again because he proposes that this here is Islam because this is what Islam teaches since the coming of the Prophet Muhammad. But we already established that Islam started with Adam and therefore the Sharia, certain laws change with certain prophets. Hence, when Jesus Christ wasn't in this earth, of course, nobody saw him as a true prophet, nor a man, nor the son of God, nor anything on those lines. Jesus simply wasn't born yet. There was no miraculous virgin birth either. Still, however, we say that Abraham and Noah and Moses were true believers, true monotheists. They didn't need Jesus to come for them to be true believers, true monotheists. I guess you would agree with this as well. And therefore, yet again, he's building another strawman where he tells you this here is what Islam teaches and therefore nobody before that could have been a Muslim. And this simply goes completely against Islamic teachings. Jesus was authenticated by his virgin birth in miracles. Number four, Jesus wasn't executed by the Jews and Romans. Keep those in mind as we work through the candidates for the true followers of Allah. It's basically four categories of people that we hey, can look at. Category one, debunked. the pagans and other religions of the world. They nope. don't believe the one simple message. They believe in many gods. Belief in one god is Ooh. extremely rare outside of the descendants of Abraham. For example, it appeared very briefly in Egypt around the 14th century BC, and that's about it. True followers of Allah. Yeah, he makes more baseless claims here, of course. He simply lists some pagans and tells you, well, monotheism was never around. It was always paganism. But that is simply not true. First and foremost, in Islam, we believe that monotheism was first. Before you can believe in two gods, you have to believe in one god. We believe that the fitra, the natural predisposition of men, dictates that to begin with. But nevertheless, if you look into history, of course, you can still find monotheism. For example, if you look into Zoroastrianism, there you will find, of course, the mention of the singular god of wisdom called Ahura Mazda. Or even in the Vedic tradition, you find mentions over and over again about the singular source of creation, which is referred to as Brahman. But even within Greek philosophy, for example, if you look into Neoplatonism, the one is mentioned and he is the ultimate singular source of all reality. But even if we look into the indigenous religions of Africa, of course, the Christians nowadays would see them as pagan. But nevertheless, we do find beliefs in the supreme god. In certain African traditions, the god was called Nyame. Anyways, all of this confirms Islam yet again. I mentioned it a billion times already, but the Christians are so thick, they simply can't or won't, don't want to understand it. 
God created us humans. His preferred relationship is, of course, pure monotheism. Worship that one God alone. He sends messengers, and those messengers come with the same exact message of worshiping that God alone. The law said the Sharia changes over time, but that message of pure monotheism is always the same. People receive that message, and then people do people things and start inventing new gods, quote-unquote, they start worshiping idols, etc. All of this, you as a Christian, can find in the Old Testament. I don't believe in many gods, so they're out. Number two, followers of Judaism. Nope. But they reject Jesus, and so they reject a true prophet of God. Oh, man. They say that Dude, as I said already, if you would have asked Noah who Jesus is, he would have no idea at all. He wouldn't tell you that Jesus is a prophet even because he didn't know Jesus. So therefore, the Jews, of course, we as Muslims say now they are disbelievers. However, prior to the coming of the Messiah, the Jews that followed the true teaching of monotheism were Muslims, were believers as well. This wasn't a true was prophet, so to didn't do any real miracles, and was executed. His execution is affirmed yes, in the Talmud. That's why they're disbelievers. True followers of Allah don't reject Allah's messengers, so they're out too. Number three, Orthodox Christians. They believe that Jesus was the divine son of God who was crucified and raised from the dead True followers of Allah don't believe that a messenger of God uh, is divine. Uh, no. Exactly. As I said in the beginning, the Orthodox Christians would of course fall into disbelief because they follow the Nicene Creed, which was established 325 AD. They propose that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all God. Therefore, they fell into something that we as Muslims call shirk. They attributed partners to God. However, yet again, if you look into the early followers of Jesus Christ, some call them the Ebionites, who knows, those people, we propose, were pure monotheists. They followed Islam. Do you understand this? So they're out too. Number four, there were non-Orthodox groups of Christians too. Some of them believe that Jesus wasn't crucified, which might make them seem promising. Are these the true followers of God? No, because they're Gnostics, and Gnostics believe that the creator of the world is evil. Jesus was purely a spiritual being, and he wasn't... Okay, that's not true either, because you have different Gnostic beliefs, so not everybody believes that God is the Demiurge. Crucified because he literally didn't have a body to kill in the first place. True followers of Allah don't believe that the creator of this world is evil, so they're definitely out. The best candidate left over is the Ebionites. They're a small sect go. from the second century, Potentially. and we only know a little bit about them because Christians publish criticisms about their beliefs. Yeah, exactly. The history is written by the victors, and therefore, obviously, the Roman Catholic Orthodox Church that established what it means to be a Christian would, of course, go against the Ebionites. And therefore, how can I take their information now and say, well, this is what it is. This is what they believed in. We have very little information, and if anything, we have it from the enemies of the Ebionites. Is pretty patchy according to scholars. But could they truly be the real followers of Allah? Absolutely not. Some of them were actually Gnostics, and others of them rejected. Yeah, you basically debunk yourself yet again because you said some of them were Gnostics, which confirms my claim that Gnosticism is not one single entity. There were many different beliefs that later then were classified as Gnostic. Jesus' virgin birth. They created their own version of Jesus and rejected the real Jesus. True followers of Allah don't reject Allah's messengers, so they're also... And he has absolutely no proof that all Ebionites rejected the virgin birth at all. Out. And so that's it. That's everybody. Jews, Christians, of various kinds, Orthodox and... Unorthodox. Yeah, dude, obviously Orthodox Christians and other denominations of Christianity and Jews and pagans wouldn't be classified as Muslims. Great job! Orthodox and everyone an else. Which means idiot. that Islam is has failed the challenge. There is a five century <laughs> long gap in human okay. history. Fantastic. Right before the final Let's stop it here. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Absolutely big brain time. He wins the award for Strawman King. 
But let me respond in the same fashion as he just did. Hey, dear Christian friends, wink, wink, I have a challenge for you. Can you please show me where Abraham, Noah, and Moses did the cross, worshipped the Trinity, and prayed to Jesus? Please, can you show me that? Only then those people would be considered Christians. Oh, you can't? Well, you failed the challenge. How absolutely ridiculous and imbecilic this video is. All right, guys. But anyways, this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And as always, may God, the only true God, bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs> Oh